Klal Yisrael moved from tough love and all that stuff, I think that's all gone, and people are stuck now with love, unconditional love. It doesn't work. Unconditional love, first of all, the kid feels, I love you unconditionally. It means I love you even though I hate your guts and you're a huge disappointment to me. But I love you, my love for you is unconditional. You never went to a kid who just finished a Siyam Ashas and said, I love you unconditionally. It implies that I have a reason not to love you, but I'm never stuck with you, and I'm going to love you even though. That doesn't apply to a chayla. That doesn't apply to somebody who was hurting. That doesn't apply to a kid who went through trauma and is now dysfunctional. I love you anyway. What's the anyway? You go to the hospital and you see a kid there in a, knebuch, in a coma and you say, Yankee, I love you anyway. No. Adar the more sick you are, the more I love you. The more Rachmanis I have. Rachmanis mevatelas hasin akenoides, says the Tanya. So what's really happening is, and this is really the forefront, is they're missing it. It's not about love. It's true, even the parents that sit, say Kaddish on their kids, also the love is there. That's not something you can control. It's in the Bria. Puppies love their, their parents, and the parents love their... Esh kefeim, ef kedoyiv shakol, the Navi says. There's nothing more, more dangerous than a mama bear who doesn't know where her cub is. Even they know unconditional love. Okay? It's not about that. The kids don't care if you love them. They say, I don't care how many people are going to cry by my levaya. It's not what I need from you. What do they need? One thing, acceptance. I accept you. I like you. I don't look down at you. I don't judge you. That's the frontier. And that's what we're doing that you weren't doing before. So we have approximately, I would guess, 15% of parents that somehow, through the whole spiral, didn't have an all-out war with their kid, which is very, very hard. I mean, a kid stops going to school, stops being tzniya, stops eating, keeping Shabbos, eating kosher. How could you be so loving and so calm that you don't have a war? About 15% of parents keep the love. And they say always, like, what, am, what are you going to teach me? I love my kids. I never fought them on it. They don't feel that you get them, that you really accept them. The whole miracle of TP is that when you prove to someone, I accept you, you heal them. The healing power of acceptance is so strong, nobody ever thought about doing it. Push it, they didn't think about it. They thought about punishing, consequences, fighting, arguing. Then they said, oh, that's not working after we lost who knows how many tens of thousands of kids. We have a new thing, loving, I love you, even though you're not from, I love you, even though you're a disappointment, I love you, even though, even though, but I love you, which is okay, it's better than the other one, right? I tolerate you, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to throw you out of my house, I'm not going to reject you, fine. But the medicine is when the kid feels, my parents accept me. Why didn't anybody think about doing that? Because everyone is scared. If the child feels accepted, why should they ever change? If I feel, I fully accept you that you're Michal Shabbos, why should they ever change? That's, that's what the normal thinking is. They shouldn't feel it's okay. If they feel it's okay, why would they ever change? But it doesn't work that way. The story of the Chazanish, that a, fa a father told, and went to the Chazanish, he said his son is off to Derech Nebuch, driving on Shabbos. The son wanted a car. The father said, I'll buy you a car as long as you promise not to drive it on Shabbos. Most people would do that. Most people would say, I could buy you a car. You just promise me you're not going to drive it on Shabbos. I'm not going to provide you with a car to drive on Shabbos. To be Michal Shabbos professor, I should supply it. I'm going to, my favorite word, I'm going to ena enable you. I should be the enabler. I'm going to put a gun in your hand to be Michal Shabbos professor. Oh, no, sorry. Not going to do it. The kid said, no deal. The relationship got worse. Kishehegia al Rabbeinu, listen to Das Taira, not regular thinking. Das Taira. Kishehegia al Rabbeinu, the Chazanish was Mayayetz Kedai to buy the car for your child, Luloi Shum Tanai, unconditionally. Don't make any Tanai. In order, Shetiskabel, Shetiskado, in order that the influence should grow in the future. And we would say, well, what kind of a message is that? 
What does it mean? I accept you. You're going to drive a car on Shabbos and I'm supplying the car? He's going to say, oh, I have everything. Why should I ever change? Because there's a power called influence. There's a power called hashpa. It's not working with seichel. The hashpa works that if you're my best friend and I'm your best friend, I love you and you love me and I support you and you're close to me, you're going to want to be like me. So the Chazanish was saying there's a lot of other eggs to fry. Is he going to marry Jewish or not? Is he ever going to come back to tshuva? Don't lose your influence. So think about it. Most people, the logic is not logic of Tyra. Most people would say, can't supply it. Chazanish said, supply it. Buy the thing, even though he's going to do a terrible avera with it. Kadesh, it's a skabal hashba asay alov, which is what we're all about.